Taylor with AgriSpray Drones. Today we are doing swath width testing on the J100. Now we've done this a lot in the past with every drone that we bring out because we want to make sure that we know exactly how wide this drone is going to apply or the ranges as far as the width. So swath width is tricky on drones. There are no booms. We rely on speed, height, droplet size, and also there's some wind effect and other factors in there as well. So we have to understand how those factors affect our pattern and our consistency of that pattern and our swath width. It's a bit subjective. It's not a perfect science, but we try to make it as perfect of a science as we can. So right now what you're seeing is a J100 flying and spraying a string. It's spraying that string with dye, and we spray this with every parameter set that we have. We spray this string at least three times, three to four times. Uh, they reel it in, we spray it again, they reel it in, spray it again, reel it in, spray it again. Um, that way we have a representative set of applications. And then we'll take that string and AgriSpray Consulting will run it through their spectrometer and test the uh, droplet density, basically the dye density across that string. The heavier concentration of dye, the more droplets hit, the lower concentration, least amount of droplets hit. And then we can actually run it through a program, they have a program that will basically take, you know, where we shut our, our swath off on the edges so that our overlap makes up for the remainder. The cool thing about the J100 is yesterday when we were doing this, uh, I went a bit slow because we had to do, we were doing basically kind of a route uh, or custom flight route, which is cool in the J100, but it takes, you know, time to do pass after pass. Overnight, we worked with EA software team and they created a multi-pass uh, flight mode where now we actually just set one application parameter. We want it at 10 feet high, two gallons per acre, whatever we want to set there. And then we tell it we want three passes or four passes and it will continually, automatically, right now the drone's flying automatically back to the start point and then spring again. That was an overnight software change. Really cool thing about working with EA. Uh, the tests we're running right now are on the sheet here. You can see we've got, uh, looks like 40 tests in total. We're actually gonna add more uh, to this, but we are changing micron size, gallon per acre, speed, and height, um, as well as we're gonna change out our nozzles too. Uh, we have different nozzle sets that we run, uh, and then we can run two or four nozzles. A lot of things to test here. Uh, because everybody has different needs for spray drones. We want to make sure that we have the data so that when you're doing an application, you have some confidence to know what to make the application at. Okay, we're going to come back with you guys with some results here in just a bit. See ya. Swath testing results are in for the J100. Uh, there's some interesting finds here, some really cool things, some things that I question, some things we need to test more of. So let's go through, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we tested, what I liked, what I didn't like, and what I found interesting. So uh, what we tested were all these different parameters up here, number of nozzles, height, speed, micron setting, all that kind of stuff. Um, we, we did 42 different tests, all right? So before you get up in arms and say, well, you should have done this, should have done that, we did 42 different tests. That's a lot of tests, and it took a lot of time to get that done. We know we, we need to do a lot more different tests at different volumes, at different heights, with two nozzles, with you know a bunch of different stuff here. Uh, but we have to change one variable at a time. So what we focused on was primarily the, um, the micron size and nozzle configuration, because there's three different nozzle configurations. Uh, and then we focused on the speed because you can your speed can range from, well, right here. This is double the speed of this. Um, and then everything else, we kind of kept standard what most people run. Most people are going to run two gallons per acre. Most people are going to run between 12 and 15 feet high. And we think, or we thought, most people will run four nozzles, but it might most people might run two nozzles based on these test results. So anyways, we'll be doing more tests, so just be patient. This takes time. Uh, we have a limited amount of that. So um, first off, right off the bat, what I liked, what I loved, frankly, is this new nozzle. This guy right here seems to be about magic, um, especially at a, at a particular droplet size, um, which is interesting, but, but pretty uniform. Um, when we look at this, this 280, so if the remote setting is 100, you're actually getting 280. Uh, out of this this 
disc right here. Um, and the reason that there's a discrepancy is because this is a pretty new disc. Um, and even these discs, there are discrepancies here. Uh, but the the software in the remote will be changed soon to reflect these numbers, not these numbers. But currently, you have to select 100, but you're actually getting closer to 280 um, with this disc right there. But when you look at every test result um, with different heights and speeds, um, you look at uh, this 280. There we go, 32 feet, 19% variation. Uh, here we go, 34 feet, 19% variation. Uh, 36 feet, 12% variation. 37 feet, 15% variation. Uh, 35 feet, 14% variation. Guys, this is excellent. Um, we haven't seen a drone uh, do like this re repeatability on this wide swath with this low CV. And I think a lot of it has to do with this nozzle, uh, just from what we're seeing and this droplet size setting here. It's just kind of that magic number between like, you know, that's the right RPM to get the velocity coming out of that nozzle at the right, you know, the right speed of droplets coming out of that nozzle to kind of get past that rotor wash. Um, and it's the right size of droplets to kind of get caught up in some of that rotor wash to kind of help spread it out further. I don't know, could be a magic number um, right there. So I love this this disc. Um, unfortunately, no uh, nobody has this disc right now, most likely, uh, but it will be available on our website to order soon. We'll be sending it out with some of these drones uh, as well um, in the box uh, coming in, in the future. Love this nozzle for very efficient uh, um, wide swath. We're doing two gallon per acre rate, putting fungicide on, I mean, even herbicide, I think um, this disc is gonna be great. Okay, when you compare that to this disc here, um, we we see you know a lot less 30s, a lot more high 20s, and we actually see higher variation. Um, so this is kind of like that standard single disc. Uh, it comes with this outer shell on it. You move that outer outer shell disc, and you have this on there. Um, but kind of what we're seeing is when you can kind of compare apples to apples, um, we're kind of seeing that we have a lower swath higher cv with this disc um so yeah we're running this disc right here um the other thing that i noticed that that's what i liked what i liked like that disc um what i didn't like was results of this disc um the other thing that i thought was interesting so because finally I'm closing remarks on kind of like some thoughts on this anyways Interesting is when you increase your volume, so we look at this one right here, and then we compare that to this one right here. Uh, one thing that changed was we increased our volume from two gallons uh, to five gallons. Everything else was the same, and our swath decreased by, by two feet, but it actually probably decreased more than that because our variation is higher uh, right here. So, and this kind of ties in great to kind of the next thing is how to actually read this and how to understand the recommended swath between, you know, on here versus like what you might actually want to run, right? So just because it says 28 feet, does that mean you should run 28 feet? Not necessarily. Um, anything, these, the CV kind of dictates this. So if the CV is 20% and lower, that's good. That's acceptable. If it's 15% lower, that's very good. Um, that's, this is according to the consulting company that did, did this test for us. Um, so it says 19% and 12% here. That means that it's not just two feet narrower. It's also less, it's also more variable across, you know, that, that swath. So we compare like this test here, and then I'll pull this one up right here. Test number five. Uh, this is at two gallons per acre, and there you can see yeah, we got some kind of humps going on there. Um, but overall, we've got pretty good um, uniformity at 30 feet, um, whereas this one here, we still have humps, kind of a weird hump going on there. Um, this is at five gallons per acre, and we don't get to 12% until we get down to about that 26 feet. So really, we're talking about a, about a four feet difference between these two tests. Uh, so how to read the PDF results. Uh, when you're looking at this, you're going to have some squiggly lines right here. These, each different line 
is a different pass. So um, we did basically three passes, sometimes four passes um, across the string. Um, and this is the die concentration from the, you know, how heavy, heavy the die concentration was on that string and from the center line out. And then this is kind of like that averaged out. So, um, you know, all, all three of these passes averaged out. Um, and then this box right here represents in this case, 30 feet. That's what's marked right there. So that mark right there is marking at 30 feet, a box at 30 feet, 15 left, 15 right. And then we know we've got some overlap here, a little bit of overlap there. So this shows you if you go back and forth, right? Pass down, pass back, that's back and forth. You're gonna have overlap from that next pass to you know your previous pass. And that's what your pink and your yellow represent right there, is this overlap. And so this dotted line right here is kind of like the average of the total application. And then your application is gonna vary from that and so that 12% is how much it varies off of that dotted line. And again, anything below 20 is good, below 15 is great. So in this case right here, that sweet spot is gonna be probably 29, 30 feet is gonna be like the best, right? You can go up to 32 and still have acceptable. Uh, and when, with these parameters, I should say. But you go too narrow and you're gonna have too much overlap right here see that is too high um now if we compare that to like uh this one right here 37 feet 15 percent that's really wide swath and a really low variation why is that well it's because we have a very gradual uh kind of bleed off of of our droplets uh from left to right uh, this is flying fast right uh, so this is a very gradual bleed off, a lot more overlap. And if you look at our CV here, you know, even up to, we go to 42 feet, we're still at 20% because we have a, it goes out pretty wide, but it's a gradual wide. So we can go down to actually 28 feet and it still says only 14% uh, because, you know, even if we overlap a bit more, it's so gradual that that overlap isn't too much overlap. Um, so uh, there you go. I thought that was very interesting. Um, to see that on some of these test results, and again, which one was this? There you go, that 280, it's like a magic, uh, the magic micron size with the, the magic disc. Uh, it's just every single one of these right there, there again. So, all right, um, <laughs> except for this guy right here. For some reason, that little guy, don't worry about that little guy. Not sure what's going on there. <laughs> that was interesting. I'm gonna have to see what the heck happened on that one. Um, all right. Uh, those are kind of my, my thoughts anyways, uh, what, what we see, more testing to come, but overall it looks like this disc right here is going to make a very, very efficient drone when you couple that with uh, 44 feet per second. Uh, getting a lot of work done. If you want to see these results for yourself, go to our website, go to agrispraydrones.com, go to Knowledge Hub, search J100, and then search Swath, and there they are. You can view them right here. You can copy this link in your browser to see the full screen. If you guys have any questions um, and uh, comments, feel free to let us know. Thanks.